So this monk is taking a walk. How did they know where and when to lob that mortar? You killed our boys! Stop! We're always right, and we're always wrong, and we just can't stand it. We should have fought harder when we could. Branch breaks, and he falls to his death. Hello, hello. Hi, how are you? I'm doing good. Is Sean? Pretty good, pretty good. Oh. I just, uh, I don't take any chances with this COVID stuff. I even wear a mask when I'm talking on Zoom. <laughs> of course, it's a very special mask. Better be safe than sorry. Yes, look at that. I know, isn't that cool? My wife made these. Send me one, please. Right on. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> What's up, Skip? Hi, Sean. Hey, how's it going? It's going pretty good. Hey, Sean, how are you? Great, Skip. How are you? It's good to see you, man. Good to see you. Is Mr. Oh, hello, Sean. And Skip looks great. Oh, there hey, you. God bless you. Look at that beard. Look at that beard. He looks Hold on, let me, get a, let me get a towel. I just worked out, got out of the shower, and I'm sweating more than I was when I was in the shower. <laughs> I'm getting a little taste of what it was like on the set with the, these guys, Sean. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's the difference between our characters right there. <laughs> yeah, right there. Oh, my golly, my golly, my golly. Richard. See, I'm in L.A., and it's really hot here. Oh, is hey. it? Yeah, it's really hot. He doesn't, How he, are you? He doesn't remember me at all. So I do remember you. Of course. We've talked. With, about you're, are we talking to Vegas right now? Yes. You're in Vegas? <laughs> and you yeah. have a very good friend who does another one. Another Tony Toscano in Salt Lake. Yeah, That's you're right, yeah. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, well, we talk like every month now. You keep having all these projects coming out. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I keep coming out with these movies that have no budget to uh, get a PR firm or, you know, or to, 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 to get, uh, you know, big stuff. So I got to do it, you know. Well, you look oh, great. You Thank you for showering because it, it smells so much better now. I know. So <laughs> you guys, are you guys in New York? And, and Jeff, you're in Vegas? Right. Well, it must be really hot there. It, it's getting cooler. It's getting cooler. Is it? Yeah, it's in the okay. 90s now, which is cool to us. So. <laughs> yeah, well, that's cool, in the gentlemen. 90s here. Thank you all for joining me today. I love the reception. What a great short film. Two men trapped in a siege, final moments of their lives, and their lives are flashing before them. And Richard, you know, your character, Robert, seems calm and accepting his fate more than, Robert, uh, than, more than Gary. Do you think? Okay. Okay. Maybe, I, yes. I mean, I, the, in those I was, moments. I was going to say that, that I, uh, it's sort of like being in Trump's America, where bombs are going off all around you, and you just, you just got to survive and hope that it ends soon. But well, yes, I guess I was. Uh, was I calmer? Well, yeah, I guess so. Well, Gary, but that's, was, uh, Gary was agitated. Gary was pacing. You know, he was, he just seemed like he wasn't accepting his fate more than you were, your character. I, well, it's, I mean, and what, it, well, I, I, the thing is, is that I don't, I don't look at things that way. Right. I, I, we would just, you're in the moment and you react or you act like the script says. So I guess, am I right, Skip? What, what do you think? You don't say, oh, you're the, they're, you're there. You're the one that runs around and I'm the one who keeps peace. But I am more, well, I tell the story that's very, uh, uh, about the Zen Buddhist monk. Right. So, so therefore, I guess I am. And but maybe he, that led, he was, led uh, evidence. He was solving the strawberry mystery. He was placing blame. He had regrets. He was the one that was more worked up, is what I was trying to say. Skip was the one in the moment where he was in a panic. He was he's literally reevaluating his life within the minutes left of his life. And you were on the other side, just right. kind of like, you know, yeah, you know, you're just kind of. Right, I, Sean, <laughs> answer that, because I don't know. Yeah. I don't I don't look at them at, at, a, at a movie or a uh, or a performance like that. You right. do because you're an observer. I, I, you can't observe while you're in the moment. You right. got to you got to be. So yeah, I, Sean I, I mean, wrote, I think I think that um, uh, it, 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 it looks like that on the surface, but just under that, you know, subtextually, 
it's it's I think uh, Richard's character is more in touch with what has what what has been happening between our sons um, and I'm more in denial of that and so I'm more focused on the bombs and that stuff but I think it's more of I mean if you get if you go down this it's like Richard says you're playing the moment you know and you're acting what you can act in the reality of that moment <clears throat> but um when you say one of us is more agitated than the other and more you know you know i don't know if but it yeah but it, it you could also say i mean skip especially the way he looks is so much more blue collar right and therefore reacts from the gut right and i'm more cerebral but i wouldn't but i i, I wouldn't say i'm i'm calmer i'm just i think my character is more cerebral i i i love that story about the monk and the, the cliff and hanging on and all of that he would never tell that story he wouldn't know that story but well, exactly. i do yeah exactly and sean shooting in what becomes their bunker how many days was this shoot and uh, where did you find that location it was pretty unique um yeah so the, the shoot was a day and a half and the location was in a basement in dumbo there was a building that was being like gut rented or something it was definitely uh, it was a day and a half it was a basement in a in a building that was getting some kind of gut renovation in dumbo and it was not cheap they did they, they, really yeah it was really expensive actually but they they offered us some kind of uh, deal but um it didn't feel like a deal but we were grateful to have the spot because it was perfect and, perfect uh, yeah oh it, was it really a, was it was perfect yeah yeah it was, yeah I, it, 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 I will say the room did help as I skip you see if you say this with character no it question really did. we felt that we were in a bunker the ceilings were low ish and even if they weren't as low as I think it was all so dark and especially we were lit and you know 12 feet to our to our right or left was the crew who we could barely see because it was so so dark where they were and so light where we were all right, and that big steel door. That's right, yeah. That was and, that helped a lot. And Richard, you were talking yeah. about the story of the monk and the tiger, and that was definitely the moral of the story. I mean, it just fit, and Sean too, it just fits so well within what was happening around them. So I, when you read that short story script, did you think to yourself, you know, th that aha moment at the end? All right, I'm going to be honest. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I did this as a favor. And once you say yes, you read the script and you go, well, well, I'm doing this. I didn't entirely understand it. And it wasn't until Skip and I started working on it that everything gelled. I didn't know what Sean had exactly written. And then as we were working on it, I then saw it. Everything became much clearer. And uh, I think that we served Sean pretty well because I think I think it did gel. And uh, I'm very, very proud of this. I mean, the, 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 uh, it's a story that doesn't come from a normal mind. And it's, uh, it's quite a, a, a nice fable, uh, an ugly but nice fable. And, and no allergies to strawberry, Sean? Everybody got checked out? Sorry, what's the question? Nobody got, uh, no allergies to strawberries? Everybody got checked out before the shoot? Yeah, I guess, I guess that was a, uh, we got a lucky. Pre prerequisite. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. At, at first it was shellfish. Uh, and then I, I said, uh, no, no. So he changed it to strawberries. That's right. It was the monk and the oyster originally. <laughs> you had Ashley as the strawberry wrangler. I saw her in the credits. <laughs> yeah. That's right. she, she asked for that uh, credit. So, of course, I gave it to her. Hey, those straw, those and were some let me tell you something. strawberries. She didn't those come strawberries to the really had to work. Yeah. <laughs> those, those she strawberries did not come to the work. table with yeah. full knowledge of how to do. We said, no, no, no. We want more on this one. And we want it sprinkled over. No, no, no. You're not doing it right. You're not doing it. And she calls herself a wrangler. <laughs> strawberry wrangler. She needed, well, we're, oh. Skip and I are veterans. <laughs> we're vets of the business. And yeah, she knew her way around strawberries. And I'm <laughs> sure you had the tuxes dry cleaned before you returned them, Sean. I still, I still have uh, one of the jackets. Um, yeah, we didn't, we didn't rent those. Um, Elise, who Skip, you got to keep yours, didn't you? Yes, I did get to keep mine. Then I lost fifty pounds, so it doesn't fit anymore. Oh, that's hilarious! No, I took the thousand dollars. I thought that was better. There, there you was much smarter, <laughs> much smarter move. <laughs> yeah, at least did the wardrobe. Skip, you've lost fifty pounds. Yeah, oh, I yeah, lost. I, 50, I lost fifty pounds right after we uh, shot the film. I drove I, uh, you to it, didn't I? 
I drove. Yeah, you did. I was like, God, I can't live, so, I can't live like so this. goddamn good. I gotta. <laughs> yeah, get right. Yeah. Um, wow, no. good for you. You look great. You hey, look thanks. Fabulous, man. but yeah, I, I, I see it. I see it. Yeah, and you don't have the double chin that comes with so much losing weight. I no, know. I know, but you're lucky. This is yeah. more of a reception reunion than a reception interview. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> reception, reception. Right? You know, they've been doing all these other movies and all these table reads. I brought the cast of the reception back together. So, and this is a vague. Here's a Vegas uh, connection. The fifty pounds that I lost was on Penn Jillette's potato famine diet. Did you really? Yeah, Why I did. It? I ate nothing but potatoes for three months. No kidding. Really? Yeah, nothing but potatoes. No salt. No sugar. No oil on the potatoes so you could have as many potatoes as you could eat each day <laughs> and turns out and what did you did you put anything on the potato a little, a little pepper a little garlic powder but that's it you couldn't put anything else i mean vinegar Nothing, you could have balsamic vinegar how about mustard calories you couldn't mustard you could do but you got to be careful with mustard because it has a lot of sodium in it uh-huh how do you feel about potatoes <laughs> oh i love potatoes i, I would be sick of potatoes Oh, I got Sean. I'm kidding. I got so sick of potatoes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, like, I cook potatoes every way you can imagine cooking potatoes. I, you know, I learned how to make mashed potatoes with almond milk, with oh. no butter and no, you know, just a little pepper. Um, but the part of the point of the the diet, because I'm an impulse eater. You know, I love food, and I'm like, I want a roast beef sandwich. Um, is to take taste and you know, craving and all that stuff completely out of it. So that you're really just eating because your food doesn't really taste like anything. It's re And potatoes are sort of perfect for that because they're 80% water and 20% fiber and they're a complete amino acid. So you get everything you need from it. Um, but, uh, but you don't really, you, 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 after about a week, you lose craving for taste, you know, for food. Can I, you, can I ask you a question or two? Can you do it for not the three months? Can you do it for three weeks? Sure. But you, have to, you can. Yeah. And I've done a couple of tune-ups um, since then, you know, where I've sort of like pick gained six pounds and then I'll just eat nothing but potatoes for three days and knock them right off. But I see, I eat to make my feelings go away. So what happens yeah. with the feelings? Well, you, 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 but I know it sounds crazy, but eat potatoes. Yeah. Sub, yes. Well, you know, sub subdue them or whatever the word is sublimate with potatoes you crave you know no. eat and you'll get since, tired of it since oh, we're I doing confessions for a potato i i do intermittent fasting and i lost like 30 pounds before doing that you only eat eight hours a day and then that's it and then you just you eat healthy during those eight hours but there's times mm -hmm. where you just don't eat because you're not hungry anymore your stomach shrinks but try that. Just eat eight hours a day. I do it every day and just eat between nine and five or 10 and 11. You can adjust it every day. And that makes a big difference. You can still literally eat what you want, but you kind of don't do that because you eat healthy and you eat less. So good for you. Wow. Congratulations. That's cool. And how much did you lose? Uh, at my peak, I lost about 25 pounds just by, cut, just by eating eight hours a day. And that's it. Nothing else. I did the same thing. I gained 40. <laughs> because I really that eight to five was fantastic. I gained thirty during the pandemic, Richard. I gained a lot. Yeah, right. I did nothing. I said crap, you know, just whatever <laughs> I want, when did I want? You know, watching lots of Netflix. So but gentlemen, thank yeah. you so much for the diet tips and uh also <laughs> for a wonderful short film. And you know, what a discipline, Sean. I mean, you told the story in, in 10 minutes. That was just fantastic. Uh, Isn't it amazing? He, it's really, it was beautiful. And, and, it, and it's all on the page, even though I didn't see it on the page right. when I initially read it. Well, do more favors, it Richard, really, because it, it worked out, Richard. Do more favors. Yeah, yeah, it was great. <laughs> what, how are the other films at the festival? Which one? Uh, how, are there, have you seen other films at, at, the fe at a festival? Oh, no, no, not, I haven't. Not yet, no. Oh, so how did you get a hold of this? um the the publicist sent me an email about it telling me about the festival oh so no. that's how you saw oh yeah. i thought this was in connection because i know that we're in a couple of festivals yeah right it's at newport uh beach right. film festival and right they, i watched all the shorts there were some great there's some great shorts on there are there yeah it was nice to be in uh, good company and it's coming san jose film festival is coming up and i'm looking forward to seeing uh, great we got in with there. That's going to be great. Uh, and right? we saw it at the um, Festival of Cinema in Queens, and uh, it was a drive-in, so I got to see 
Rich and Skip oh. on the big screen. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. That's we have a drive-in We have a drive in here in Vegas and it's sold out every night. One of the last in the country. So I know, yeah. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta say uh -oh. I just want to say one thing about the film. I mean, I I I was at the time we did it, you know, everybody got it, right? Obviously the but I was you know, since the whole conflict between the sides in our country felt more metaphorical in a, I mean, obviously the divide was there, but it didn't feel like bombs and mortars until this year. And then, and it, it was, so the film was so prophetic to me in that way, because well, that's very right. And right, sure. this, when we moved into this year, it literally became like violence in the streets. It literally yeah. became people shooting each other in the street. And, uh, you know, my daughter is gay and, and, you know, we, we have a place upstate and she gets, weird energy from people all the time in the grocery store or something. She's there with her girlfriend, you know, so it's like a real thing. And, yes. and, uh, and yeah. so, so Sean's, I just wanted to say Sean's, uh, you know, vision and his script really spoke to something that's amazingly concrete and unfortunately happening right now before our eyes. Yeah. Like, Thanks I, for I can't wait to see what you do next, Sean. I mean, if that's, if that's this little sample that you did with a short film, uh, I can't wait to see what you do next. So. Yeah. All right. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much. Good luck in New York. Good luck in LA, Richard. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck, Richard. Good to see you guys. Great, Great to see you both. Yes. Oh, yeah. Jeffrey, nice to see you again, too. Exactly. Nice. All right. Stay safe, All everyone. Right. We'll talk again soon. Thank see you. Later. Later. Yeah. <laughs>